Hi there, I'm Lisa. This is Ted, my partner, and their best friend, Hans the dog. On the 18th of March 2020, when COVID-19 spanned the globe and the world began to lock down, we decided to turn our lives upside down and begin the adventure of a lifetime. We threw in our jobs, packed up the car and purchased this 14th century Monument Historique de France. You have arrived. Woohoo! We have arrived. <laughs> With no previous experience, just £80,000 budget and a tent as a temporary residence, we plan to renovate this former House of Tabellion into a family home and thriving business. Learning new skills along the way, we have one year to bring this ancient Relay de Post back to life. We invite you to come along for the ride. So strap yourselves in and let the fun begin. Good morning everybody and welcome to week 31 at Chateau de Montmagne. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now most of you saw the update on Wednesday which gives you kind of up to speed as to where we were on Wednesday with apartment 2, the Jean-Pierre suite. Now you know at the beginning of the week we had 38 jobs to complete. We've done pretty well, didn't we? Yeah. We got the list down by Wednesday. So today, at the end of the video, we're going to show you a walkthrough as to where we're at at the moment with the Jean-Pierre suite. But first of all, as of Wednesday, we were put back a little bit, wasn't we? Uh, we had a whole day out because of some naughty little boy. Yeah, with four legs. Yeah. And a furry yeah, coat. Yeah, not Ted. <laughs> it wasn't me. This time it wasn't me. So, yeah, Hans took a day of air time and this is why. Do you want me to do this today? Yeah. This afternoon, yeah. Okay, so Hans is in the doghouse this morning because, well you might be able to see him, you'll see in a minute he's got his girlfriend over, but that's not why he's in the doghouse. Since we've stopped letting him go up in the tower, he's been playing up a bit and he's um, been able to get out of the parkland because when Thor came to um, bring his tractor on, he knocked down some of the, the barrier, um, the, well the, the natural barrier um, that forms like the ditches and it means that Hans can get up now onto the road over the parkland. Now before, he's never left their side, but because we're now stopping him going up in the tower, when we go up in the tower, he thinks, sod you, I'm gonna bugger off on my own and take myself for a walk. And he goes over to see his friends, the cows, over the road. Which isn't good, because it's across a road. So, a lovely farmer friend this morning Hugh has come over to help us build a fence to stop hands getting out. So let's go and introduce you to Hugh. Moment, Hugh. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Oh, my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 gotta be. Hello. <laughs> <laughs>
the agricultural stuff, you see it would be really in your face. Yeah. So I think, especially as it might be temporary, I think this is, I think what we're doing is really good. Put it this way, I think it's better. Um, so I might have to go back and get some more. Just let's see what this thing does. Um, So during this product, uh, project, uh, there are certain elements that um, somebody uh, wants to have done that are beyond the other person's skill set, should we say. Uh, <laughs> not pretty much everything. Um, so when we're building things in the room, somebody asks for them to be built and doesn't actually say, do you think you could do it? Maybe if you can't do it, that's fine. It's, do you think you could do it and just do it? But that's because I have faith in you, yeah, my know. darling. <laughs> I know you have faith in, I don't have faith in myself. You can do anything. I don't have faith in myself. So, so when you, we're talking about certain elements. So one of the elements is that we had a light fitting. We bought a light fitting off the internet, as you do, because you like the look of it, not thinking, about the mechanics of it, how it's going to work, or whatever. And because we've got large beams in this place, and there's big gaps, this particular light fitting wouldn't fit between the the the, uh, the beams. And our electrician said, you know, I can't put that one up because I need to do this. And and I said, well, no, that's okay. I'm sure we can just you know make something that will work. So I thought, right, okay, yeah, nice. I'll get a nice piece of wood and I'll make a square thing and I'll shove that up there and it'll look fine and it'll bring that down below the beams and we can fit the light fitting. The other person said, I don't want it square. I don't like the idea of it just being put up there. I want a round one. So after much scratching of heads, I came up with this. Good morning. Here we are at the uh, experimental camp. Um, we're going to try and make a circle out of this uh, piece of oak that I've got so we can put a light fitting on it and stick it in the ceiling. I'm going to get down here so you can see me because I've got it set up so you can see the table saw. So the theory is that we made a little jig that moves up and down and is in the mitre slot of the table saw. And we drill an hole in the middle of the piece of wood and we draw our circle on it. And the idea is that we're going to cut a circle on a table saw that cuts straight lines. I've seen people do this I've just tried, just had a little tester on a very thin piece of material and it sort of worked okay. Um, I'm not sure, it's probably because of slight movements and stuff, but it needs to be relatively round for our indoors, who's over there at the moment. Now, it's a bit hairy because this stuff is really strong and it's about 45 mil thick so inch and a inch and a inch and whatever um, inch and three quarters so it's I'm a little bit nervous let's see how it goes shall we
probably don't need to stop it to get rid of them, but I just like the idea of getting rid of them. It's cutting. Let's give it another go. Well, it sort of worked. I've got a flat edge there because the centre point wasn't right. But the good thing is it's not square anymore. It's got flat sides, but I'm not really bothered about any of that. Because ultimately, this is to go... Um, up in the ceiling, up in the ceiling with a light on it. So it's just got to look kind of decorative. And I'm not really going to worry about things, but that sort of works. Um, I could probably make circles, oh, well, wherever I can put pin that, I can make a circle. I will try it again because it's kind of interesting. Um, but that's start. What we'll do is we'll clean it up on the thing and we'll probably round over those edges. I've just got to see if it fits in there and I can get a fix in on it. The trouble is, is it's going in the ceiling. Um, and either side of the beams is where the battening, where we put the, the the plasterboard in. And that's what I'm hoping I can fix this to. Um, that may well be <laughs> easier said than done with a great lump of oak like that. By the way, that is three pieces of oak. Three chunks that I've cut together and jointed and just literally glued together. So. That's, I think that's pretty good, you know, there's uh, a little gap on the side here, but that's really all I've done, and I'll run it through the planer to flatten it off, and there's a few little marks which we'll sand out, but we're going to sand this smooth on my spindle sander, just to get 
see if we can get a little bit. We'll probably make horrible, probably make it even worse. But there you go. Um, and then I might put a decorative edge on it, and then I've got to obviously wax it. Um, with I'm going to use the Jacobean stuff that I normally use, the Bry wax, and that will darken it down, and it should look relatively like the other beams. But it's going to have a fairly large lighting fitting on it, so you won't see much of this. And I may, if I can get that flat, uh, sorry, if I can get that round, not flat, um, run the router around it with a little, again, decorative edge, and it should look a bit better than that. All right. See you later. Did it work, baby? Um, up to a point, um, as I was explained on the thing, um, because my circle wasn't central, obviously I have a flat edge there, but I'm going to clean, try and clean that up and make it look. So when I put, because I was thinking about putting a router on the edge of it, um, a just to, yeah, give it a little yeah. plinth like sort of action That's and just cool. to clean these up how you know, did you do it so i suppose i'll watch the video you will watch, <laughs> watch the video yeah watch the video if um, we need to brilliant and then we'll just clean that up on the spindle sander well done, baby. i've got a drill hole in it so i can get me uh <sighs> wires through cool this while you've thing. got your saw going Could you cut my bit of wood for me, baby? What, cut, what bit of hand lodge? Where I've marked it there. Is that where you want it? Sure. Yeah. Is that where you want it? You want to do it? No. Thanks very much. So now I understand. Why people make stuff out of oak. This is just to sit a light on. And look how beautiful that is. I've got a little routed edge on it. Yeah? Even the dark bits look nice. Even the flat bits don't really show so much. But look how beautiful that is. Yeah? That's just to put a light fitting on. Beautiful. Hey. <laughs>
which is part of the built-in wardrobes. Um, it's a case of doing pretty much similar to what I did with the ballon cupboard. Um, there's a small door um, on the one side and then to sort of mirror the vanity table and the other side um, which is going to be the bedside sort of table there's a curve and so we're going to put a curve on that top cupboard um, which is something I've never done before like most things but we're going to give it a go um, I have had a look at um, how people put curves on pieces of wood without the use of a bandsaw or anything like that so we're going to try that kind of issue but what I'm going to do is rip up all the fascia pieces to start with and then uh, we'll come back and show you that I'm video some of it uh, but it really is you know mitre saw, table saw, sanding, 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 sanding putting chamfers on edges with routers and all that sort of thing so it's stuff that you've all seen before but so the best idea is we have a look at that and then we come back and show you actually fitted it. All right, see you in a bit. So I'm gonna sort out a bit of timber. Um, and I've cut this in half. Well, cut, cut a bit, cut the worst of it off. Um, dimensionally, it's not far off what I want. Um, so I can put it through the plane and take the nasties off it. Yeah, it's just about 24 mil thick, so I want it 20 mil thick. And I can rip my planks out of it. See, this is the trouble I have. Right, so I've cut the 260s and the 30 that I need. Obviously, lengthwise, we need to change that. But I'm left with that. That little bit. Now, if anybody who does this, and um, I'd imagine a certain fellow by Mr. Uh, by the name of Graham would know what I'm talking about. That looks incredibly useful, don't you think? I can't throw that away. You know, it's just, it's nice, it's clean, it's, you know, it's 20 mil by just over 20 mil. Yes, yeah, 20, 20, 20 by 22 that is. You know, it's just useful. I can't throw it away. Why can't I throw it away? I'm gonna throw it away. But you can't. You know, I know I've got stacks of the stuff. But there's that. It's just useful. I need a massive, massive wood store of little bits. I need a whole barn of little bits. Lisa needs a whole barn for... What was she talking about this morning? I can't remember this morning. But she was saying about, oh, I need a whole barn. Oh, yeah, for her tea bags. But this... I need a massive wood store. There's wood in there. There's wood here. There's wood in the far barn, in the house. There's wood everywhere. And it's all probably going to get used. But these little bits, oh, drive me mad. Um, the time has come to cut the curve. So I'm going to, I've decided to try this for starters. This is. 5 mil, 5.5 mil, used to be 6 mil plywood, 5.5 mil plywood, decent quality um, stuff that I've got. And what I'm going to do, uh, because I've seen this being done, is I am going to run it over the table saw about half its thickness and score it several times so it allows it to bend it allows it to bend the curve maybe a centimeter between the grooves um, score the back and that will allow it to bend
So as you can see, I've started cutting the grooves so that this piece of plywood will bend a little bit easier. Lavage just walked in um, just to see what's occurring and I'm not sure this is going to work but what we're going to do is we're going to give it you know, could you not have done the lines closer together yeah I would have done them closer together I was just trying to be It doesn't need to move that much, but so it might be alright. It might be okay. I've done it a bit long, and I haven't done that edge because I just wanted to see. So I'm going to do the rest of it, and then we'll offer it up. Crack on. <coughs> Be enough. Yeah. Might be enough. Let's. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. Should we go and have a look and see if it works? So it kind of worked. Oh, why does it move? This is the thing. It's annoying me. Is it moving? So it's gonna require a big to put it in. But my idea is that I'll pin that in there like that, and that gives you the curve. Um, it's moving as we speak. So, you have to jam it in there. So, you have to bang it in there. So, I think it may be a case of uh, teamwork putting this one in. But that's the curve, that's the idea. How are you going to do the fascia on the front curved? This one here? Yeah. I think I'm going to do the same idea. Yeah. I'll give it a go. The only other thing I can do, I suppose, is to, is to effectively get really thin bits of this and we'll like effectively it layer them on. Yeah. But they'll have to be really thin. Yeah. Um, they don't have to be probably five mil thin. Okay, we're going to try something new today. So I can't find a fabric um, that I like to do the bathroom lined with. I put a leather one up, which I really liked, but it just don't work, it's too heavy to be able to pull up and down, which is a real shame because I really liked it. So I can't find any fabric I like. I've got boxes and boxes, chests and chests of, of fabric, and I can't find any that goes with it. Um, so I'm going to try and chalk paint fabric. Now, I've seen this um, a lot. Annie Sloan has, has got loads of videos on how to do this. So, so if you want to see it the right way, go and watch Annie Sloan because she's really good. But um, and lots of people have said it does really work. I've never tried it before, and I can't believe that you can chalk paint on fabric. But apparently you can. So I'm going to give it a try. 
um, and, and see how it comes out. And I've found some um, uh, decorative stencils online that I ordered ages and ages ago, thinking they might come in useful. I was going to do a floor with it, um, but um, I'm going to try and do the fabric. And uh, it's got four different designs in here. So, yeah, so let's give it a go and see what happens. Now, apparently, oh, you water down the paint. Now, I'm hoping, I've got this um, graphite here, and I'm hoping there's enough in there. I watered it down. Oh, get off, get off. Um, so I'm hoping there's enough in there to use as a base. So I'm just going to paint it on and see what happens really um, and apparently you just paint it on and leave it to dry make it a bit wet Right, okay, so I've painted it all um, in watered down chalk paint and I might just leave it to dry for a little bit and see what happens. I don't think it takes too long to dry. No. Okay, so we're back again. So I've got my stencils here and um, I've drawn a straight line at the top. I'm going to place them in. Okay, so I'm trying to match up the colours that are in the tiles in the bathroom. And we've got some blues, greys, some golds going on in there. So I've got some blue here. And I've got some... Um, this is some wadding. Um, so I thought I'm just going to sponge... Some areas. I don't know if to tip some of this out actually. Okay, so I don't want too much. I'm just gonna try not to get over the edge and just pat down. with the blue. I'm now going to use some white to, um, to do some highlighting, but I've been able to borrow a sort of sponge from Ted because I just want little bits picked out. And I just want to do sort of edges. Now the last colour I have is the bronze, um, it's like a real goldy, bronzy colour. Now I do really only want to pick out little bits with this, so um,
So there is my first row finished. Just the rest of the fabric to go. Then finally, after about four hours, I eventually finished. Okay, so now my fabric's complete, it's time for me to get the sewing machine back out and make the Roman blind. I'm pretty pleased with it. So, now we'll take you inside to see where we're at with the Jean-Pierre suite. Follow us. So this has been a proper labour of love, this, this thing. Um, we had people to help us do the first fix and this, that and the other, but lots of the, lots of the touches are all us. And we had to do a lot more than we thought we'd have to do. Um, features are oh, this beautiful soft closed door as we, it still freaks me out to watch it. Nice towel roll. It's lovely and warm that is, really nice. Um, vanity unit um, has come in. Um, we didn't like the handles it came with, so we put some nice new ones on. We bought ourselves a real swish tap, and Lisa said, oh, we need something behind there, need to do some tiling. So we did a little bit of tiling, I did a little bit of tiling. She did the grouting. It's d definitely a two-person job, this. Installed the mirror, still got to put the light on, but we're still deciding a little bit as to whether we want the light that came with it, or we're going to have something a bit more fancier. I think we should have something a bit more fancier. So the shower is all functional, the ballon is in, everything is hunky-dory, it can be used. And, it, and, it, and I have used it, and it's brilliant. Oh, it's fantastic. There's a couple of things you won't have seen. Um, Let's look up first at Lisa's blind. Now this is a bit special because this is a piece of cloth that she found that she painted with chalk paint and then stenciled. Each one of these is hand done. Now that's an achievement. I think that's fabulous. I think that's really, really lovely. Yeah. Stenciled. I think that is beautiful. And she's embellished the, you know, with with gold leaf paint and uh, and all that, and a bit of white in there. I think it's absolutely stunning. I really, really love it.
but I'm pleased with that. And and I think that that you know if we had the light in here, we'd be pretty much done in here. One room done nearly. <laughs> Just the it's, light to yeah, go up. Yeah, and, but you know, come on. I think this this you know much as and I I don't know about you, Lisa, with the camera, but I was. I got quite demoralised about this room when things were going and you know things weren't going according to plan and, and you know we'd had things to go on and things didn't work out and yes we've still got you know architrave to do but that's the finishing touches that I'm really not bothered about. But now it I think it's really lovely. It's a beautiful I think bathroom. it's really lovely bathroom and I you know I'd be I'd be happy. If I was staying anywhere and I saw this as a bathroom, I'd think, great. Oh, this is great. It's a really lovely good. size. Well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, that's the thing. Considering the room we're going into next, let's go into this room. And this room, you know, please don't focus on the floor. But, again, we've got this beautiful wallpaper. I don't so know if they can see. really see the colour properly. No. But it's a it's a blue, it's a navy blue. It's navy blue, it's gorgeous, but it's gorgeous thing. And and we've got um we've still got to do the floor in here, but all the ceiling is done. The, with the light fitting again we are um at odds as about the light fitting. Um there's certain things we, we do have, are at odds, you know. I want something and Ted doesn't. <laughs> well, and I, and I can understand why she wants it, uh, but, but I think we should, yeah, mate, we'll, 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 we'll put it up, we'll, we'll put it up and we'll see, and see, you know, because we can easily take it down again, you know, that's the thing. So, yes, floor has got going here, but, and this, this is, again, fabulous ceiling, this labour, taking all this, you know, you remember this was covered in plaster. There was a wall here. And so, you know, it was two rooms and you just think it's just, you know, unrecognisable. And all those nails came out of there. There are a couple still in here, but I think, and I said this before, that this is history back whenever this was built, but this is now our history. Lisa took those nails out, I took a couple of them out. We cleaned the bed, we sealed the bed, we built the wall. And, and you know, that's the, this is our history, we are making our history now, and that's the best thing in all the world. So, it's a big reveal. So, so somebody who's holding the camera marched in here one day and went, I've got a brilliant idea. And when she told me, I just thought, absolutely, 100%, perfect, perfect idea. And the idea was, a very simple idea, to wallpaper the cupboards. Which, by all accounts, is a very French thing to do. And so all the people that have a little whine in a moment about feature walls, doesn't this now make sense? Now this is your ballot cupboard, so there's a water heater behind here. But who so in the recess next to this ballot cupboard is going to be, because this bed is coming out here, this is going to be, as we have explained before, a sort of bedside cabinet. As bedside table, I should say. It might be a cabinet, because I'm getting all poncy with myself. But it's probably going to be a, 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 just, just a shelving unit with a table lamp or whatever. And then some shelves in here for objects like that. But anyway, so yeah, so just some shelves in there. Nothing fancy, just, you know, just some shelves. Just, and this one is going to have a curve on it, which makes sense over here. So, four post the bed, or I say where the... So I've just walked through the bed, which apparently I've got to make, 
Um, and, and you know, I'm not as as frightened about making the bed as I was before. Um, I may well invest, and this will make her laugh her head off. But because of the crap I've had today, I may well invest in some very posh clamps. Um, it's, you know, yeah, we're proud, we're proud of what we've done, 
Um, we we kind of like to thank everybody for giving us ideas and and helping us along the way. And you know, it's not just and it's not just our YouTubers. Um, it's the people on Facebook and it's the people on Instagram. And the encouragement, the encouragement from the majority of people has been absolutely wonderful. And that's what's kept us going. And you say bad things, you say lovely things like, oh, you keep us going, and you're so energetic, and you're so happy. And but sometimes your head goes down, and it's, it's the comments that we get that lift us up. I also want to say a big, big thank you. It sounds quite fine, doesn't it? But I also want to say a big, big thank you to our neighbours. You know, who have been wonderful, you know, um, our neighbours up the road, the boys from the farm, um, have been absolutely lovely, and we've met so many brilliant people, and you know, Super Dave and Karen, you know, uh, there's, and it's ongoing, it's massively ongoing, and you'll see a lot more of all of these people as, as, as time goes on, but it's just those, it's, you know, their encouragement, their boosting, you know, and the fact that, you know, we're getting we're more integrated in society, into the French society, and we feel like this is home. I think another thing is that we get so many people saying that we inspire them and they go out and do things after watching their vlogs. And that for me is brilliant. Yeah. Because that's all you could ever wish for, you know. We do this, and, and that's what we kind of started out saying. That. Well, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so it's the inspiration of everybody. Yeah. Um, and just know. to say, you know, we're doing this on a shoestring budget, and we, we're we getting quite close to the wire now on the budget, but we are trying to save as much as possible by doing everything we can ourselves. And as Ted said, something we should be really proud of because we've never done it before. And it just shows we can do it. Yeah. You can yeah, do it too. Anybody can, you know, like anybody can, you got all the wherewithal, you know, I, I would say I'd like to be 20 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be nice, but that's obviously not going to happen. But, you know, that's, you do these things, don't you? And it's brilliant that we do these things. And, you know, you can't, you can't say that it ain't fun. Yeah. It's, it's a good laugh. We have a good laugh. You know, it's... So, I think now, we are going to go and have a hot bath. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a haircut. I haven't thought about dinner for tonight, even though it's about 9 o'clock at night. Um, but we're going to go and have a hot bath. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a relax. And tomorrow, we're going to take the day off, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we and might. we're going to read a book, relax, <laughs> but we're not going to do any renovations. I don't think we should do any renovations tomorrow, but enjoy. And come back next week because the roof's starting. The roof. So, so. back to major renovation next week, roof starting. Ted, and make, Ted make me lots of things out of wood. Okay. And we need to clear out downstairs so we can get started on the tea room. Yeah. So it's only one day on. Like, <laughs> like and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much love for watching. We love you all. Stay Take safe care. and healthy. Yeah. yeah. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Don't lose the plot through lockdown. Bye. You ordered something. Oh, you ordered something from Toronto. It's from Toronto, Canada. <gasps> Table, napkins, key chair. Bracelet. Dog collar. Where's it from? Has he got any villain on the back? Yeah. Claudine Gillen. 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 Claudine Gillen. Willow Avenue, Sweet Toronto, Canada. We had a post. Ted, 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 Lisa, and Hans. And even spent your name right. Shall we open it? Ooh. We're getting presents. This is just. <laughs> oh! Did they made them? I don't know! How out of way, you? What's this? Is this something to refer to me? Oh, I think it, this is for hands.
look at his face. <laughs> what is that? That's a bit of skin. Is it? Oh no, it's, is that snake skin? What we got now? <laughs> <Look. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> the formal pet store. Oh my god, I've got this on it. There's a note, there's a note, there's a note. Bonjour, Terra Lisa. Oh, it's in French. Are you video? Yeah. Yeah, I think It's in French. Bonjour, Terra Lisa. J'espère. I hope. I hope this finds you well. Small thank you. Ah, SMG. SMG. Yay. Thank you so much. Canada. Avec un petit quelque chose. A little something for hands. Du lemelier. Claudine oh. and Stella. Oh, that's really oh, sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think this is for hands. Well, I don't know. Is it? Oh, look. It's been bow tie on. No. Go on. <laughs> My dogs don't wear bow ties. Look. <laughs> what is oh, this? Oh, look. She's really sort of blur. It is pretty stuff. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. I like them. Oh no, no. <laughs> They go round his ankles, look. No, yeah, no, they don't get 